Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Keisha and this is Beauty and Comfort. Today I'm doing a evergreen inspired design and I decided to bring you guys along at the beginning stages that I typically leave out of the videos to kind of show you how I create my colors and prepare myself for making the soaps. In this first container, I'm using this designer green mica. This is from Southwest Candle Supply. And in this container, I have a mix of radioactive, which is a neon green, and let us entertain us. And these two will be the second dairy green color. In this container, I'm going to be doing the brown. Since I'm doing an evergreen tree, I was kind of playing around with the idea of doing the brown shade to represent the bark and the trunk of the tree and decided at the last minute to go ahead and throw it in. So that's why I have a new container. I'm also gonna be doing a third shade of green because to me, trees are multi-dimensional. They have a lot of different colors and I've been taking a lot of walks, so I've seen a lot of trees. So what I do is, this is a one teaspoon measure and I'm gonna start with more of this one than the darker shade. This is Satin Penny from Mad Micah's. I do about a teaspoon of colorant and I add more if I need more. The second shade of brown is Tall, Dark, and Handsome. And I'm gonna use half as much of this as I did the, um, the Penny, the Satin Penny one. The three colors that will be in their own individual pots are done. I'm gonna grab myself another container so we can make this to pour into the main bucket. So in this little container, just like I do with titanium dioxide, I always have it set to the side and do the same thing with the green so we can go in the main pot. Put my one teaspoon right on in. And this is three olive martini from Mad Micah's. So now that all my colorants are in their respective containers, I'm gonna grab my main pot of oil, which I had strategically placed to the side. And I'm just gonna pour about a tablespoon of oil into each one. If I do a little more, it's fine. Like I said, these will be back in the pot anyway. So it's no biggie if it's a little bit more than a tablespoon. Then with my little mini whisk, I just do each color. So let's start mixing. Okay, now that all the colors are mixed, this color here is a little bit lighter than I wanted. I want it to be a deeper shade. And to give me that level of depth that I'm looking for, I'm gonna grab some black iron oxide. Be right back. Alrighty, so I have my black iron oxide and this is from Southwest Candle Supply. Uh, uh, uh. And I'm gonna add the teeniest bit of this and add more as needed if necessary to get it to the deepest shade of brown that I want. I want it to be really, really dark brown. All right, so see how we've deepened that so much? So now that all my colors are ready, we're gonna set them off to the side. I got my gloves ready. The next thing to prepare for making soap, you wanna make sure you have your fragrance. So in today's soap, I'm gonna be using this one. This is from Soap Goods. This is the Apple Wreath fragrance. It's a Bath and Body Works duplication. I think this would be great for a woody vibe, but not be too like pine coney. I thought this would be more acceptable gender neutral fragrance. I think if I went too far in the pine section, I might lose some people. <laughs> my oil is about 85 degrees. My lye is an insane ballpark. I also picked up my tip. This is a star tip with a pointier side. This is a 2110 tip and this is from Sunny. I pick up my tips and my piping bags from Hobby Lobby. So if you have one nearby, it's a really great place to pick these up. They're always in the uh, cake making section. So they're really great. We're also gonna gather up our ingredients that we're gonna throw in as our additives. This is a four pound recipe. So I use four teaspoons of sodium lactate. Before you open the lye, you don't wanna play around with your lye solution or the lye itself without any gloves. So suit up. What's left in here is exactly what I need, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pour all this in my lye solution. My best tip is to always put things away when you're done with it, because it keeps your space decluttered, and that's really important when you're messing with soap, and it's very time sensitive. A lot of different components can really impact how much time you have to work. So you wanna like 
use it and put it away so that you're not overusing something or questioning, did I put in my clay? Did I put in my milks? Did I already do this? I like to get my colors done in advance so they're waiting on me so I don't have my completed batter waiting for me to get my colors done. So I do all of this before the lye and the oils ever meet. So let's talk about my additives today. The first one I'm gonna be using is my kaolin clay. I'm also gonna be using green kaolin clay. And I'm gonna throw in some fuller's clay. For all of the holiday soaps, I have been using a milk. So for this one, I'm gonna be using coconut milk. And this is the coconut milk that I use. This is organic coconut milk powder. I picked this up on Amazon. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my additives into my oil. This coconut milk comes with its own little spoon. So I add about three to four of these for four pounds of oil. So there's my coconut milk. We're done with him, so I'm gonna put him to the side. The next additive is our kale and clay. And I have a one tablespoon measure for that. And I'll do a hefty amount of him. I'm gonna pick up my Fuller's Earth Clay and do a hefty tablespoon of him as well. Fuller's Clay is really good for the skin. I did a lot of research on this one and it's really good, if you, especially if you have oily skin type. He's very helpful. And the last one I'm gonna be adding is the green French clay. Since this is green, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. And the brown will be strong enough to cover this so you won't see it in there. And if you do, well, tree bark is also green. So plop him in there too. So all the additives are now in. The sodium lactic has now been added to the light solution, which also has my Tussa silk fibers already incorporated and dissolved. So this is ready to go. So all we gotta do now is get our stick blender, get this blended in and add in our lye. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is blend my additives into my oils on high for about 30 seconds to a whole minute. Dunk everybody under the oil and give it a blend. Alrighty, that looks like a really diluted chocolate milk color. And as always, I scrape the bottom and the sides just to make sure nothing has been missed. Checking for lumps and clumps. That looks... That looks smooth like chocolate milk. Give it a final swirl, burp the baby, and lean him to the side. Now I'm gonna take my live solution and we're gonna pour it down the stick blender. And I'm going to pulse this on low until all the lye is in the oil. All right, now that all my live solution has been poured in, I'm gonna blend this for about 30 seconds to 60 seconds until we reach emulsion or light trace. Now, this is a warning because there's so much clay in here, this will start to go really quickly. Um, that's why I'm going to just to emulsion or extremely light trace on this and you can see it's already thickening. It has more of a light cake batter vibe going. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure my fragrance and get him in the pot. To measure your fragrance, you wanna make sure that you're using a um, really good grade of plastic that will be able to handle the fragrance oil or you can use glass. Put it on your scale. I measure my fragrance in ounces, tear it out and pour the recommended amount of fragrance. Every fragrance oil will have its own recommended amount, some say up to 6% of the total weight of oils. Always grab a little bit more if you like to make a matching lotion or a candle 
If you want to do anything more with this, it's always best just to buy more than what you need for your recipe so you don't have to worry about not having enough for something else and then waiting for it to come in. Um, Soap Goods is a really good distributor in my opinion. I get my order in about ooh, a day or two after I place my order, so I'm always happy with that. Even during all this madness with Corona slowing down shipments, I still get this in like two days. I'm gonna give this a good blitz. It looks like it's turning my oils a yellowy color because it started out as like a chocolatey brown color from the clays. All right, I was blending that without pulsing. I'm just giving it a really good blend. I'm gonna need my blender anymore because I'm not using titanium dioxide. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this and get the stick blender out the way. I'm going to start with the brown actually, and I'm gonna get him in here. I'm only using a little bit of brown, I just want him on the bottom to represent my trees. And I'm actually going to blend this. One. I just thought about it. I want him on the bottom and I want him to stay stable. So I'm gonna mix this to about a medium trace. Bring in me mold, reintroduce my stick blender to the party, and bring this to about a thick light trace or a medium trace. All right, now he's reached trace. He's a nice medium trace, and I want him to hit trace because um, I want it to stay stable and at the bottom. So now that my brown color has reached a nice thick consistency, look at that, he's a thick one now. I'm just gonna pour this, aiming mostly for the center, cause he is a bark of tree here, or tree stalk, whatever. <laughs> don't mind me, I fumble on my word. Now I'm not gonna stick blend the other ones cause I don't need them to be thick. Scraped him as much as we could. I'm gonna take him down. And I'm gonna take a skewer and wipe the sides because I don't want the brown in the top. I want him to stay in the bottom. If he is at the top, I mean, it's no biggie piggy. I mean, he'll just look like a branch, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna take my little paper towel and get the brown off of here because he will no longer need to make appearances. He's gonna stay at the bottom. It would help if my hands were clean. Let me rinse my gloves off real fast and then we'll start bringing our greens to the party. Okay, now that I've cleaned off the brown mica from my fingers, I'm going to wipe off this puppy here. I actually gonna get rid of him and get another one. Always carry a spare. And just to make sure I don't have any transfer of that brown, I'm just gonna do that little number. So we're gonna do equal parts of these two greens here. And for the remaining green, I'm gonna take my olive green, three olive green, pour him in. I'm gonna add that in. Get all that batter around. This smells so nice. I am experiencing some slight acceleration, which I anticipated, mostly from the fact that there's so much clay in here. But that's a really pretty color. Now I'm gonna move over to my lighter green. <laughs> and the deepest of the greens. Now greens tend to go a little wonky. So don't worry if your greens look a little weird. They'll go through the saponification process and they'll be a totally different color in a day or two. But I kind of want this to be darker. I want it to look more like an evergreen tree. So just to give me that ultra contrast, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the colorant, which is designer green. And I might even add a little brown or black to get me to where I wanna be. So add a little bit more and a pinch of, let's do tall, dark, and handsome. Cause I want this to be more of a deeper green. I'm gonna do a little brown. All right, let's get that mixed in and see what we're working with. 
I'm gonna swap out my spatula for a whisk just to make sure I don't end up with any colorant clumps in here. So I'm gonna grab a whisk and really give it a go. Now that's more of where I want it to be. When we're done with him. Wipe off me paws. And now I'm going to come in here, give this one final zhuzhing. There we go. And now I'm going to start pouring. So let's do two passes of each. So we'll do half of this. And then half of this. I'm gonna pour this on one side. And pour him on the other. Then with my good old spatula, I'm gonna scrape these out. My fascination with evergreen trees is, I don't look at them as just potential Christmas trees. I think they're beautiful all year round. I think they look great while they're still, you know, rooted into the ground. And whenever I would have some type of evergreen in front of my house, I would rather decorate it. So I would put lights on it and put some weather safe things on it, like adhere something to it. And then when the holiday season is over, I would just take it down. And that way the tree is always reusable. <laughs> And he remember he remains in my yard and beautiful and that's kind of what I'm going for here. I'm looking for that live planted tree vibe with a little bit of adornment. And I have some basic ornament type designs I'm gonna put on top. So now that we have that in there, I'm just gonna come over here in the corner, point really low and get all that in there. Real simple pour in action there. Tamp him good. I'm gonna clean up my mess, wait for my frosting to thicken and put him in a piping bag and then we back to frost and put on our ornaments for this evergreen tree. Okay, I went ahead and did some quick cleaning and gathered everything we were gonna need for the next step. So while we're waiting for the frosting to continue to firm up a little bit, I wanted to share with you guys the extras that I'm gonna be adding. So like I said, I want this to look like a tree, but not an overly decorated tree. Something really simple, but festive. So I picked up two glitters. I have the Emerald City Glitter and the Ruby Reds Glitter. These are both from Mad Micas. I also have some custom gold glitter that I made. This has white shimmer in it some pot of gold and a couple of other golds that I kind of grabbed. I'm just gonna dust this on top too to give it that um, sort of like a tinsel vibe, but gold tinsel instead of silver. And I also have some salt that I dusted in the same gold. So you guys can see, pretty, pretty. And I'm just gonna sprinkle these on gingerly. I also have a couple of other add-ons. So I made some Milton pour stars and I made them in yellow and white. So they're gonna be going on. I also have some red gumballs that I'm gonna cut in half so they can go here and there and kind of look like ornaments. And I still have some green leaves that I use in another batch and I decided to put them on to give it that more lively tree vibe as well as some mistletoe. Now I store all of my melting pour embeds in plastic zip bags because it helps them from sweating. So here's my mistletoe and the green leaves. So I'm gonna put these on to kind of give that tree vibe because trees have leaves and not all evergreen trees are firs. There are other ones as well. So I kind of want to play around with bringing the tree vibe to life and giving it a nice adornment look. This is still a little loose and my frosting is definitely not ready. So I'm gonna wait another five to 10 minutes and then we'll be back for frosting. Now this is sort of firmed up. He's not wiggling and jiggling. I'm going to take a little bit of my green, my gold dust, I don't know why I said green, my gold dust. I'm just gonna sprinkle this on just a little bit here and there to give me like a random mica line, but not a solid one. Just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Give a little bit of something in between the frosting and the main base. Kind of like when you decorate a tree and you put the lights on the inside. Kind of what I'm going for here. Looking like a backlight in the tree. So that looks good to me. Just a nice little dusting, nothing too major. Let's do a test with the piping. 
Okay, he ready, he ready. Let's go ahead and get to Python. So we got our first layer on. We're gonna sit him down to the side and I'm going to dust him a little bit. And I'm gonna take the designer green mica cause I wanna kind of matte this out a little bit and dust him on top. I'm gonna do the same thing with the gold. And mixing the gold and the green does not bother me at all. Just want to give this a little bit of highlight. I want to highlight all that texture that I worked on with the piping. So it's gonna be cute, cute. Now that you guys can see, you had a little bit of detail. I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit. So you guys can see that nice green texture. All right, so back to piping. I don't need these bars to be like super tall. I just wanna have that dimension like a tree does where you can see the outside, the inside. Kind of like that tree we all drew when we were kids. <laughs> we all drew that triangle shaped tree because of what we knew. And I'm gonna go at it again with the green and the gold mica. Just sort of dusting that on. I don't have a whole lot of frosting left so we might be able to do a final peak. I'm gonna at least try to get a final peak on everybody. So let's keep our fingers crossed, shall we? <laughs> and I'm trying to do all 360, you know, of this bad boy here. So I'm really just sort of angling my brush so that when I flick it, it kind of gets on everybody. See what I mean? All sides. I'm going to take Firm spatula, because I forgot my popsicle stick again. Move it out of my way. And scrape this down, because I need as much of this frosting as possible if I want to get most of these bars the third pike. Spike, all right. Wish me luck. I did it! We made it! We made it! One last time with the green. And then some gold. Now this isn't the last time I'm gonna be using the gold, I don't think, so I'm gonna leave him out here, but I'm gonna put the top on the green, I think I'm done. He looks good to me. So now that all my green and gold is on for now, for this layer, we're gonna get my green glitter and my red glitter, and I'm gonna put him on. I need to get some help, hold on. Jeremiah! I did it! Okay, so now for dimension, we're gonna add the green glitter. I'm thinking about doing this like a one-sided thing. Hmm. Put the green down. Now to fight with the red one. <laughs> My son doesn't know his name. Not open. Okay, so I have the red. I'm gonna turn it, because apparently, because I'm right-handed, I have a really good flicking ability with my right hand on the right side. I'm gonna do a little number like this. A little bit more for the tail end. No man left behind. No soap without red pixie dust. Ooh, this is coming out better than my imagination said it would. I love when that happens. I also decided to pick up my holographic glitter. This is Into the Mystic. This is also from Matt Micah's. I'm just gonna sprinkle this on the top. It gives me that twinkle vibe. I went in my room to get my husband to open this and said, oh, hollow will be great. I've become hooked on hollow thanks to Christine over at Simply Nail Logical. She has definitely gotten me to understand and appreciate the multifaceted nature of holographic stuff. 
Now for the gold glitter. Well, this isn't gold glitter. This is actually gold salt that I colored gold using this same colorant here. Just to give you some texture. I love texture. And if you sort of do a flicky motion, you get a better chance of everything sticking. Okay. Ooh, that's looking so good. All right, now for my embeds. So I got myself not only gold fingers, <laughs> but these star embeds in white and yellow to look like the star atop my tree. Oh no, I grabbed one of my moles that I did not put my ruler on. I'm gonna have to eyeball the spacing here and hope for the best. I think I only put markings on like half of my molds. I have like eight of them. Yeah, I was half lazy. I only did some of them and not all of them. But I kind of have a general mindset of how thick my bars are. So here's hoping that my mental spacing works for me. I think my first star is off, but you know, it's cool. Take a little gold and flick it on the top of my melt and pour stars. Now for my little leaves to go on here. That was starting to irritate me, oh my God. So I'm gonna put my hollies on just like that. And I'm trying to space these so I know they're gonna get cut because they're fairly large, but I want to have a little bit of something represented on each one. Now I'm gonna take some of these leaves and press them in as well. And then I'm gonna hit it with some more of my mica. So now I'm gonna sort of tilt this to the side, hit this with the gold. Turn it the other way so we all can see. And hit it with some gold, just to help with the texture and highlighting some things there. Then to come back in, with the green, and just sort of hit it. And then we'll finish everything off with a little bit of glitter. And then I'm gonna turn it around because we're kind of doing an asymmetrical thing with the glitter. And a final hit of the hollow. Just sort of randomly go around with it. Hey, glitter party! I still got a bunch of this salt left. So I'm just gonna throw it at it. Wherever it may land, it will be. Now, with my gold soaked fingers. I'm gonna hit this with some alcohol. Cause I wanna lock in that glitter, give everybody a home. And apparently these gloves are getting in front of the spritzer action here. So bye bye gloves, hello fingers. Give it a nice spritzel, spritzel. And that baby is life. Look at him. I am so excited about this evergreen moment. And those holly berries just bring it to life. So, as always, we're gonna let this baby go to bed and we're gonna let him sit for 18 to 24 hours and we'll be back tomorrow to do the cut. And until then, we'll see you in a flash. Hi, welcome back. It's been over 24 hours since we've completed putting everybody in the mold, and now we've taken everybody out and we're ready for the next step, which is the slice and dice. So I wanted to show you guys what the finished bar looked like, well, the loaf looked like, and this is it. Everything has its own little delicate touch of greatness. And if you look at the loaf from this angle, everybody's all nice and lined up and pretty. And that brown came out so nice and really deep and beautiful. So, I've been debating with cutting this bar. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do standing up like this, or if it'd be better if I leaned it on its side. He isn't the tallest soap I've ever done, so I'm hoping he'll clear this space here. So 
just want to line this up as best as I can. And we're going to slice it. So I think this is as good as it's going to get for me. So we're just going to go for it. Ooh, baby. Pressing down from the core. Urgh. This bar does have butter in it. So it is a little harder to cut because he is firm. But we're going to make it. I think I lost the star. <sighs> I felt that in me, core. How about you? <laughs> okay. And there is the end piece. He looks so pretty. So I'm going to get a nice, pretty sample. And that is so pretty. That is so pretty. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I wish my green was a little bit darker. I'm hoping that once it goes through the curing process, this might darken up a little bit more. But if it doesn't, this is still great. And our next one. Ooh, that's pretty. And you can see the little bit of glitter coming through between the frosting and the base. Here's one that missed his star, but he has this nice little out mode at the top. That's so cute. We are continuing our giveaway for this holiday season. We'll be giving away one bar of soap to a lucky comment of the week. So every week, someone will be getting a bar of soap of their choice. So how do you qualify to get a free bar? It's easy peasy. Leave a comment below. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel and give it a like. We will randomly select someone every week. So everybody has a chance to get their very own bar. The giveaway also includes cupcakes. So if there's a cupcake design that you are falling in love with, you can do that one. We currently had for the November release, banana nut bread cupcakes and our root beer float cupcakes. There will be cupcakes available to match these holiday designs as well. There will be options. There will be options. That is so pretty. I'm loving this color here. Beautiful. Now I recently went online and ordered some more colorants. I just want to play around with some other stuff. And for the remaining of the winter season, I will be putting out some winter vibes, you know, some good old sweater weather inspired designs. Ooh, that came out so pretty. That end piece is going to be everything. And the swirl in there, so delightful. Let's get this out of my way. Slide over my tray. You guys can get one final look. So these are what the bars look like. All dolled up and ready to go. And these will be available on our website on De the first Monday of the month. So December the 7th at noon at beautyandcomfort.com. This fragrance will also be available in our lotion and our candles. So if you want to have a full theme of any particular fragrance, you can also do that online. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending this time with me. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Stay focused, stay positive, and stay beautiful and comfortable in your own skin. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.